We're counting down the six most urgent seismic hotspots from a single week, where four major earthquakes rattled the planet. From zones where tsunami fears were averted, to places hit hardest by hidden faults and ongoing volcanic unrest, each entry reveals a different side of tectonic risk. Some of these regions faced unexpected aftershock patterns, others confronted dangerous gaps in emergency communication. What connects them all is a surge of magnitude 6 plus events in rapid succession, each ranked by immediate impact and long-term danger. Which zone faces the most unpredictable threat, and why? Let's start our countdown with a rapid-fire look at the week's global shakeup. Number 6. In the sixth place, four major earthquakes pinned the week's seismic map from west to east. A magnitude 6.9 struck offshore in the central Philippines at just 10 kilometers depth, recorded by PHIVOLCS. Japan's Tohoku region saw a magnitude 6 event around 47 kilometers deep, with JMA confirming the subduction context. Kamchatka registered a magnitude 6.1 part of a continuing swarm tracked by US, GS, and Russian networks. Near Bali, Indonesia's BMKG logged a magnitude 6 along the Lombok-Java Trench. Each event is catalogued by its regional agency. While timelines overlap, scientific consensus warns, correlation does not equal causation. This global sweep sets the baseline for what follows. In the fifth place, Japan's Tohoku region illustrates why earthquake magnitude alone does not dictate tsunami risk. The event in question registered around magnitude 6, but what stands out is its depth, nearly 47 kilometers beneath the surface, far below the shallow shelf where most tsunami-generating quakes occur. That extra distance through the crust meant the seafloor barely budged, so the energy needed to displace large volumes of water simply wasn't there. Inside the Japan Meteorological Agency's operations room, staff immediately pulled up real-time moment tensor solutions. These are calculations that reveal the quake's orientation and slip type. Within three minutes, the agency issued a no tsunami bulletin, citing both the focal depth and faulting mechanism. This approach reflects lessons learned from the 2011 Tohoku disaster, which ruptured much closer to the surface and triggered a devastating wave. Here, the intermediate depth shifted the primary concerns to shaking intensity and potential landslides, not water displacement. For coastal communities, the difference is critical. A deep quake of impressive size can leave the ocean calm, while a shallower, even slightly smaller event could set off alarms. That's why JMA's rapid, mechanism-based workflow is so vital in Japan's hazard landscape. In the fourth place, Indonesia's Lombok Java Trench delivers a different kind of hazard profile. The main earthquake here struck at a shallow depth, amplifying shaking across Bali's steep volcanic slopes. That's where the real risk emerges, not from tsunami, but from landslides and rockfalls triggered by ground motion. BMKG advisories flagged this immediately, urging caution in hillside villages and along mountain roads. Yet for many visitors, the alerts arrived late or not at all. Some tourists received government SMS warnings to evacuate, while hotel staff, under pressure from industry associations, downplayed the urgency to avoid panic and cancellations. WhatsApp groups of first responders circulated screenshots of conflicting guidance in real time, exposing a gap between official advice and on-the-ground messaging. In the days that followed, aftershocks in the magnitude 4 to 5 range continued, but the biggest story was the scramble to clarify who should act and when. For a region where tourism is vital, the tension between economic interests and disaster safety remains unresolved. Shallow earthquakes in this zone rarely produce large tsunamis, but the combination of steep terrain and fragmented communication can turn even moderate shaking into a cascade of secondary emergencies. In the third place, the Philippines faces the harsh reality of what happens when an unmapped fault ruptures beneath a community. The magnitude 6.9 earthquake that struck the central Visayas on September 30th originated from what FIVO LCS has now named the Bogo Bay Fault, a blind fault previously unknown concealed beneath the sea near Cebu province. With no surface trace to warn engineers or planners, the fault delivered a shock that left 72 people dead and 559 injured. 
infrastructure damage soared to 3 billion pesos, as field teams documented 733 damaged structures, including the collapse or severe compromise of 16 bridges and three seaports. The education sector was hit especially hard. Over 1,100 classrooms destroyed and nearly 20,000 students displaced. Sinkholes opened in towns like San Remigio and Dan Bantayan, and power disruptions left more than 800,000 consumers in the dark. Religious and heritage buildings crumbled, with the Archdiocesan Shrine of Santa Rosa de Lima in Dan Bantayan collapsing entirely. This event underscores a critical lesson. Hazard maps based on known faults can fail when blind faults rupture. The Bogo Bay Fault's sudden emergence forces a reckoning with the limits of seismic risk assessments and highlights the urgent need for robust building codes and rapid post-event mapping. For the Philippines, the stakes are not just academic. They are measured in lives, livelihoods, and the resilience of entire communities. In the second place, the next seven to 10 days form a critical watch window for anyone living or working near recent quake zones. The first step is always the same. Review the basics, drop, cover, hold. Secure heavy furniture and shelves. Before aftershocks strike, not after. Emergency go bags should be checked for water, medication, ID, and basic first aid supplies. On the scientific side, agencies track aftershock probabilities using the main shock minus one rule. For example, after a magnitude 6.9 event, the largest aftershock is often about one magnitude lower, so a magnitude 6 aftershock remains plausible in the Philippines this week. If that doesn't happen soon, it's worth watching for signs of stress transfer along nearby faults. Seismologists also monitor statistical red flags. A drop in the B value below 0.8 signals a cluster of larger shocks relative to small ones, a known risk indicator. Another is the Amori P value. If aftershock decay slows, and the p-value drops below 1.0. Experts pay closer attention for possible late surprises. A sudden burst of small quakes, especially in the rupture area, is another reason to check supplies and stay alert. In steep terrain, shallow aftershocks can trigger landslides, so hillside communities should remain especially cautious. Agency apps and official alerts are the backbone of real-time updates. Install and check local agency apps, JMA in Japan, PHIVOLCS in the Philippines, BMKG in Indonesia, or USGS for global context. Ignore viral social media claims about cosmic alignments or planetary triggers. Stick with agency bulletins and trusted sources. This week, vigilance means combining practical steps with a watchful eye on scientific risk signals. The next quake may not give warning, but readiness can turn a hazard into a survivable challenge. And finally, in first place, Kamchatka stands as the most consequential earthquake zone of the week, where seismic chaos and volcanic unrest now overlap. The July 29th magnitude 8.8 .8 megathrust, one of the 10 largest recorded worldwide, set off a swarm that has yet to settle. October's magnitude 6.1 aftershock, though smaller, marks just one peak in a sequence that has produced hundreds of magnitude 5s and several 6s, with aftershocks clustering stubbornly along the rupture zone. In terms of raw energy, two magnitude 8.8 .8 events would nearly equal a magnitude 9, echoing the historic ceiling set by the 1952 Kamchatka rupture. That precedent looms large in local memory. Soviet-era sirens, forced evacuations, and a coastline reshaped in a single night. But what shifts Kamchatka from statistical outlier to global concern is the coupling of tectonic and volcanic systems. The peninsula's arc hosts more than 100 volcanoes, 30 of them historically active. Since the July quake, covert bulletins have charted a steady uptick. Shivalok erupting ash columns, Klyuchevskaya Sopka rumbling, and Krezanov erupting for the first time in centuries. This isn't just a matter of aftershocks. It's a live experiment in how megathrust stress can transfer to volcanic systems. Seismologists are watching for stepovers, migrations of seismicity along the trench that could unlock new fault segments or agitate magma chambers nearby. Coulomb stress models built from USGS and Russian slip data 
suggests that both static and dynamic stress changes are still radiating outward. Persistent magnitude 5s and 6s, paired with volcanic upticks, mean the hazard window here is wider and more complex than anywhere else this week. For Kamchatka, the question isn't just when the swarm will end, but whether the next chapter will be written in ash as well as aftershocks. In this zone, earthquake and volcano risk now move in tandem, demanding urgent, sustained attention. From a rapid-fire map sweep to Kamchatka's ongoing earthquake swarm and volcanic unrest, this countdown has traced a week where four magnitude 6-plus quakes rocked some of the world's most volatile subduction margins. The most shocking entry, Kamchatka's persistent swarm on the heels of a historic magnitude 8.8, .8, underscores how seismic energy can cluster and trigger multi-hazard scenarios, especially where volcanoes and megathrust faults interact. Across all entries, a clear pattern emerges. Depth and fault type shape risk as much as magnitude, with Japan's intermediate quake lowering tsunami odds, while Indonesia's shallow event raised landslide fears and exposed communication gaps. The Philippines' surprise blind fault reminds us that even well-studied regions can be caught off guard. What set these events apart was not just raw strength, but the complexity of hazards and the need for rapid, region-specific response. In the end, this list reveals a core truth. In tectonic hotspots, preparedness and scientific vigilance are as crucial as the quakes themselves. Earth's restless margins demand respect and constant readiness.